he keeps on making a way. What a mighty God we, we serve. At this time, uh, Pastor Dennis Rogers is coming with our greetings, and then we're getting ready for the inspirational and, and dress. I, I was sharing with Bishop when he come in, I, I didn't know if the superintendents were going to just get standing waiting on the prayer or what, but I heard him in the room say, start on time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. I mean. <laughs> At this time, uh, Pastor Rogers is coming, and then after him will be our first administrative assistant, Superintendent Strickland. Come on, come on, give God some praise. He is the reason why we're here tonight, is that right? Amen. For I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. To our honorable bishop on tonight, Bishop Anderson, first and second assistants tonight, to the entire pulpit tonight, to our Thank the mother tonight. Amen. Thank God for Mother Anderson. To all these great women of God tonight. Amen. And to my own wife, even in her absence on tonight, we praise God. To the founding mother of Greater New Bible Way, my mother, Mother Leona Rogers. Can I just say to all of God's people, amen. Look at somebody and say, that means you too. Amen. Nobody's left out tonight. Once again, we hear you all. It's 2020. A brand new decade that the Lord has allowed us to witness. Look at somebody say one more time. The Lord has allowed us the second ecclesiastical jurisdiction of the churches of God in Christ. Well, listen, this is no strange place to most of you. Amen. And if you are for the, here for the first time, Amen. We welcome you tonight. We welcome you tonight. Amen. Let's just enjoy Jesus. I said we're going to enjoy Jesus. Is that right? How many of you really come to enjoy Jesus? Amen. There is victory in Jesus. I've been telling the saints, amen, there's a little something that's been going on with me. Amen. Brother J. Maul sings a song, amen, about victory. I told him I'm on, we're on our way. Don't judge. Yes, yes, sir. We're on our way to victory. Look at somebody. Say, Can you tell me how to get to victory? I know for some of us, amen, the 2034, you may have thought he was going to tell you how to get to Sesame Street. But listen, he ain't talking about Sesame Street. But can you tell me how to get to Oh, I got somebody know about the song. In order to get the victory, you got to put your praise in. You got to put your time in. You got to pray. You got to fast. That's how you get to victory. Think of somebody and tell them we're on our way to victory. This is going to be a celebration like none of them. We're on our way to victory. Come on, put those hands together all over the building. God bless you. You're welcome. Let's have a great time. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. Testimony. Amen. Because the Lord, our God, is a good God. Thank you, Pastor Rogers, for those greetings from the local church. And brothers and sisters, tonight, in behalf of the North Little Rock District, we would like to extend greetings to our jurisdictional family. And I would like for the district missionary of the North Little Rock district, the whole district, to stand at this time. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Missionary. And will the pastor 
members of the North Lurite District to stand with her. Brother pastors, will you stand? The pastors of the North Lurite District. Thank you. And we extend to our brothers and sisters a heartfelt welcome. And while you're in the city, whatever we can do to make your stay, your fellowship, amen, a wonderful setting, please let us know. Amen. If you need direction if, to the bank because you're out of money, we'll give you direction. Amen. We'll tell you where they are radar so that you will not get a ticket. Amen. Because if you do, uh, you don't know. Amen. We just come to let you know that in all of your kids, get an understanding. Praise the Lord. But this is going to be a great year. Come on, say, going to be a great year. Amen. Not only because we are here, it's going to be a great year because of the presence and the power of God. Our jurisdictional leader has chosen an evangelistic team, a theme for our jurisdiction. God's people called to holy living. Make a difference. Amen. And guess what? We are going to make a difference. Because greater work, come on, say greater works, shall we do because of the power of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost. And somebody looking for a miracle, we want to tell them, just look at us, look at us, look at me. Amen, because I'm a walking, living miracle of the blessings of God. So, a greater work is coming because of you, the people of God. May God bless you and the great leadership of our jurisdiction. And we move in our first planning conference of the year 2020. Amen. Happy New Year. May God bless you. Keep on smiling. Keep on shouting. Amen. Keep on living for the Lord. Amen. Because serving the Lord, no one will pay off after a while. It'll pay off right now. Let us say amen. 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 At this time, our inspirational address is missionary June Joseph. Amen. Let us say amen for her. Now listen, if, if, you, if you all would work with me, because I know she's going to speak to us, but when she's through, then uh, Bishop Rudolph yes. will come and he'll introduce, and we're going to go in that order. Y'all don't mind if I don't keep getting up here. God bless y'all. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I come thank you for this opportunity. As I've told you the last decade, I stand today saying, forgive me for anything I've done wrong or said wrong that would hinder your word on tonight. Thank you for this opportunity. God, I need you right now. Anoint me in Jesus' name. Amen. Alexa told me I have 900 seconds. Let's go. I got my time release clock, and I learned in my missionary class that an exhortation is 15 minutes. And the clock starts now. Let's go to Isaiah 38, verses 1 and 2, 4 and 5. Isaiah 38, 1 and 2, verses 4 and 5. And it reads, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. The most eye-catching words in these verses are, I have heard thy prayer. God was moved by Hezekiah's prayer. King Hezekiah 
was a good and dedicated king. He was not perfect, but he had a contrite spirit. He was always repenting. He was humble before the Lord. He prayed to God often, and he always obeyed. Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. Yet he still prayed. Somebody say pray. Amen. The prophet Isaiah brought news to Hezekiah that he was going to die. And he told him to get his affairs in order. Isaiah left. Hezekiah began to pray again. He prayed, Lord, please remember me. I have always obeyed and I strive to live right. Hezekiah cried out to the Lord, I don't want to die. My work is not done. My family needs me. My church needs me. My country, my kingdom needs me. Hezekiah kept praying and begging God to heal him. Well, Isaiah hadn't gotten very far after leaving Hezekiah. And God spoke to him and gave him a word right in the palace courtyard. He told him to go back to Hezekiah and deliver a special message. The message was, tell Hezekiah I have heard his prayer and I will heal him. Not only will I heal him, but I'm giving him 15 bonus years. How do you know that he's able to do exceedingly?
our children at school, character still counts. You ought to say it with me, character still counts. That's why in this new decade, no, I'm not doing confusion. I'm not doing chaos. I'm not doing confrontation. I'm not doing foolishness. And I'm not doing messiness. I'm talking about
Amen. Without you, all of us is up here wouldn't be up here. We thank God for you. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and he had no sorrow with that. Enjoy the Lord. What about you? Amen. Amen. Well, anytime you come to church, you ought to come with expectation. You ought to come enthusiastic. You ought to come expecting God to do something for you. Amen. We look around seeing what God is doing for other folk. Uh, you ought to want God to do something for you. Had, a, had an old deacon about church years ago, and everybody, he said, he was testifying, he said everybody was jumping and dancing and praising the Lord, and he was standing there, wasn't no things that he looked down at his feet and said, feet, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Ask your neighbor, when the last time you praised the Lord in the dance? Damn, yeah, that's too long. <laughs> My dance had come because of victory. Not because of all that good music over there. Uh, amen. Uh, it's a hip. <laughs> it's a hip if you ain't got victory. <laughs> but I thank God, amen, I can do it without that. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and, and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Sometimes your soul ought to talk. Come on, tell your neighbor, sometimes your soul ought to talk. My soul cries out, hallelujah. And then I say, I thank God for saving me. Y'all, it's a blessing to be saved. In this world that we're living in, where we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, it's a blessing to be saved. And I thank God, I thank God for, amen, those old saints years ago that took time out, amen, and, and did me like they did the old time way. Got on their knees with me. Told the Lord, save him, Lord, save him, Lord. Didn't know anything about it, praise the Lord, but he did save me. And I thank God for his blessing tonight. Thank God for that message, Sister Jim. God bless you. talked about, amen, the different things about it have happened. All of us, every day, every day, before you go to sleep, you ought to say, Lord, forgive me. Am I right about it? Amen. Pity the person who could all day and say that I didn't see it all day. Praise the Lord. You see, there's a sin of omission. We don't, we don't, we don't go out to commit sin. But the Bible said, if you commit sin, amen, we have an advocate with the Father. Am I right? But the Bible didn't say that he that commits sin is of the devil, but he that committeth, which means he that practiced sin is of the devil. I thank God that God put the clause in there, if you sin, amen, we have an attorney. Jesus is our court, our court upon attorney. You know, when you get in trouble and you can't afford an attorney, then the courts will appoint you an attorney. So Jesus is my appointed attorney. Amen. When I was one fit to live and wasn't ready to die, amen, God appointed him. And, and, and Jesus said, let him live. Justice demanded my life. But mercy said, let him live. And I thank God right now for his blessing. And then she said that, and I like what she said. She said, an anointed come back. Which means I ain't just coming back. I'm coming back with an anointing. Amen. I'm coming back with an, I'm coming back with an anointing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I thank God, praise the Lord, for justification. Justification, just like you've never done it. Y'all might look at us crazy, but God, amen, when we ask for forgiveness, it's just like we never did. And what I like about God, he doesn't have to make up his mind whether he's going to forgive us. God is sorrow, work of repentance. Amen. He'll do it when he do it. Thank God for his blessing that for each one of you that that's here on tonight. Praise God for the blessings of the Lord. This is our planning conference. And we're praying God's blessings upon you. Thank you for coming from far and near, all the way from Louisiana. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God. Amen. And from where you come from. And it might be a long way from you from across town. 
but wherever you came from, we certainly glad to see you on tonight. We promise you that if you just let go, God will bless you. If you will let go, God will do something spectacular in your life. I'm looking for God to heal and deliver and set free on this week. We're not, we're not, we're not just needed to meet. We're meeting with expectation. I want to see something happen, y'all. Amen. Business no longer as usual. We're not just coming here. Coming for God to do something. I want to crank up the old time. Amen. Something about the old time way. Amen. That, that singing, shouting, preaching, playing. Amen. I thank God for it. He's getting ready. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready for God to do something for you? Amen. Come on, tell your neighbors that this is going to be a great year for me. Amen. This is 2020. When you go... When you go to get an eye exam, you want 2020. You want 2020 vision so you can see clear. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Tell your name in 2020, I'm going to see clear. Man, praise the Lord. I got, I, got, I got clear vision. How's your vision? Ask your neighbor, how's your vision? Praise the Lord. God bless you. As we move on to the strength of the Lord, Thank God for our Superintendent Sanders uh, conducting our service on the night. Praise the Lord. Before the week is over, he's going to be running away from that stick. We spoke it just then. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just believe God, y'all. God deals. God deals in healing. He deals in set free. But he just needs somebody who believes he'll set free. He just needs somebody to believe that he'll heal. I don't want nobody praying for me that don't believe that God's a healer. I don't want no doctor doctoring on me if he don't believe that God can heal. Am I right about it? I believe God can do anything. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to look at somebody and tell you, fool with me. I'll shout right now. Sometimes folks be saying, what are you jumping about? Three years ago, I had cancer. Praise the Lord. I, I, I could be dead by now. But God. Anybody got a but God in their life? Thank you. Glory. Hey, 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 hey. Give us a bad man. There's nothing that God takes. Glory. why I praise him. That's why I praise him. The Lord has been good. You know, when you talk about material things, the folk out there in the world got that. Amen. But I thank God for healing. I thank God for his presence. I thank God, amen, for teaching me how to go out and come in. That's what Solomon asked for. Amen. Just, just, just teach me how to go out and come in before your people. Because sometimes we can get, sometimes the higher you go, you have to be careful. You have to be careful, amen, because power can corrupt. And absolute power, absolute corrupt. So you have to be careful. Everybody talk about how good you are. Everybody doing this. But you got, listen, at the end of the day, you got to go home and deal with you. And the sad thing is, too many of us don't know how to deal with ourselves. You are your worst enemy. Amen. You are your worst enemy. Amen, somebody. But I thank God that uh, not only do I work on myself, I allow the Lord to work on me. Help me to be what you want me to be. And then I tell the Lord that I will do everything that I can in my power to do and to be what you want me to be. But you got to help me. Amen. Some of you act like it's the easiest thing. Amen. Christianity is a struggle. 
It's a struggle. It's a struggle because of the fact that you, amen, you're dealing with a spirit with a carnal nature. Paul said, I would do good, but evil is present. That there's two, that, that he's, there's, there's two things working in my mind. Amen. Every decision that you make, there's something telling you not to make it. Everything that you do, there's something telling you don't do it. You got to deal with your mind. Come on, tell your name, you got to deal with your mind. The Lord's been speaking to me in 2020. The mind, the mind, it's got to be renewed, the mind. Everything you ever done, you still, you think about it sometimes. You got to work on this thing here. Amen. I praise the Lord. That's what I'm working on. Because if your mind's not good, you can't be good for nobody. You can't be good for yourself. You can't be good for your family. Your mind, your mind. And then the Bible said, let them be the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. I said this and I read the scripture where it said, in your presence. There's fullness of joy. And then he said, let me linger. Let me stay in your presence day by day. And said, so why are you doing that? So my likeness can be like that. And somebody picked it up and said, oh, to be like Jesus. That's all I ask is to be like him on my journey from earth to glory. I want to be like him. Amen. Come on, let's give Bishop a hand. Amen. We want to ask these people to stand. Thank God for Pastor Aaron Withers being with us on tonight. Amen. Come on, let's hear it for Bishop Stephen Arnold. Amen. Superintendent and Sister Yarbrough are with us on tonight. If you're visiting for the first time, if you're visiting for the first time, or if, you, if you're just visiting here, just stand and let us give you a hand on tonight. There you go. Come on. Let's thank God for this. And ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the Caribbean, we have the first lady of the St. Martin Rehoboth Church. Thank you. Come on. Let's hear it for Lady Rudolph. Thank God. All right, come on, let's hear it for Greater New Bible Way. Thank God for Pastor Dennis Rogers. And the Greater New Bible Way family, they always open their doors for our jurisdiction in a big way. And on tonight, the concession stand is open. So if you want a catfish sandwich, a chicken sandwich, whatever it is. You can just pay just a little price and then you can get it in the back. Let's support Great New Bible Way. Amen? Yes. Amen. On, let's say, uh, on, uh, let me get this out of the way first and foremost. In the morning, help me say in the morning. In the morning. In the morning we will be in some sessions and Bishop is leading us in strategic uh, planning of our jurisdiction. And in the morning, beginning at 9, I believe it's at 9.30. Bishop is going to be speaking to us and giving us an overview of what we're going to be talking about on tomorrow morning. Also, Superintendent J.J. Watson will be speaking to us and doing the training, as well as District Missionary Robinson, Donna Robinson, will be doing the training as well. And then we'll be talking about various aspects of the ministry. Come on, let's say amen for Superintendent and District Missionary. Give them a hand. J.J. Watson, Donna Robinson. And it will begin from 9, uh, excuse me, 9.30. Bishop will be addressing us, and then it will end at around 2 p.m. Then we pick back up at 6.15. Am I correct, Bishop? We pick back up at 6.15, and on um, tomorrow evening at 6.15, we want to make sure that we're here to be a part of a seminar, a special workshop that's going to be taking place. Uh, Bishop-designate Matthew L. Brown from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. If you have not heard 
him concerning strategic planning. He's a national uh, person appointed to deal with the strategic planning on the national uh, level, and he's going to be with us on tomorrow. And then on tomorrow night, he's going to be preaching to us. Amen. So we want to support that as much as we possibly can. Also, let me just say that if you are a superintendent and you haven't turned in the various reports, please do so in the office as soon as possible. And I believe, oh, and on Friday night, everybody help me say Friday night. Friday. Bishop, it's, it's an official night on Friday night. Yeah. And we're going to hear a word from our leader. Yeah. Amen, on Friday night. And so, what Bishop has asked all clergy to do, clergy, don't wear your class B on, to, on uh, Friday night. If you just come in a black suit and a tie, we're going to have church. Amen? Amen. And we're going to support our bishop so you don't have to wear the class B, but just come in the black suit and tie, and we're going to support our bishop. And uh, this is our opportunity to bless him because of the things that he does to represent us on a national level. Amen? Amen. I believe that's it. Come on, let's say amen for our leader. Amen. Our leader is coming back. Amen. Come on, let's hear it for Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson Jr. Come on, y'all give him a hand. Give him a hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Before we have our speaker to come, we thank God for Bishop Arnold's. Amen. Well, ask if he would greet us. God bless you. I'm excited about tonight. I am here to support my pastor. Amen. Pastor Lord Allen. Amen. He is an awesome, anointed young man. It's always good just to be here. I'm a part of the second jurisdiction, but especially I'm a part of the worship center. So I want to come. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Always glad to have you around with us. Amen. Well, since you are with us, glad to have you here. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Would you look at somebody and tell them said, uh, it's time for the word of God. <laughs> the Bible said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that's proceeded out of the mouth of God. And the person who will be speaking to us on tonight, the Lord laid this young man on my heart to ask if he would take the challenge to speak to us on tonight. And uh, he said, uh, me? I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> and uh, But the Lord laid it on my heart to ask him to come and speak to us on tonight. Um, met him some years ago. And he's been just a fine Christian gentleman sanctified young man from Louisiana down that close from where you come from then uh, Louis he's close to what, what part Natchitoches Natchitoches he's from Natchitoches that ain't far from Minden is it um, so he knows all the folk that you know down there <laughs> so we thank God for him and uh, the worship center that came along with him wife and the children that's the new baby praise the lord amen i had to say that that's the new baby there god bless you what's, what's his name caden god bless caden amen he waves at me back here that's right speak up for you say what's your name kayla 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 okay that's right, speak up for yourself. Me too, I'm, I'm one. That's the way you do it, son. So I want you, I want you to turn your mind towards the Word. Uh, he is a gospel preacher. Came to Arkansas and began to work with Bishop Lindsay. And Bishop Lindsay, uh, after, after praying and Lord spoke to him about retiring from uh, the uh, Calvary Church and uh, and the worship center. He's already retired from Calvary at that time. And, amen. And uh, the worship center. And the Lord laid him on his heart. 
and I think that he made a good choice. Yes. What a wonderful job, what a wonderful job for the ministry there, working with the ministry there, and the church is growing. We praise God for him. And I want you, I want you not to go down the road. Um, think about preachers, if you'll say amen while we are preaching and not waiting to, you know, we're trying to change some things amongst us. It's, it's going to you know, a man can be up and preach about 30 minutes or just really expounding, and then he goes, ah. then somebody, come on, you're preaching now. <laughs> We've been preaching all the time. So we, we, we're trying to change some things. We, we're trying to get you all ready for teaching also. Amen, amen. Uh, he's, a, he's an instructor in the Word of God and a gospel preacher. After the choir, on the direction of our president, Superintendent Donald Vaughn, um, after they were given their selection, we're all going to stand and we're going to receive our speaker for the night. The elder Lord Allen, pastor of the worship service. Clap your hands for the choir.
and your mercy. We offer praise. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for these, your people that have gathered. Pray tonight that you touch your people, touch their hearts, touch their minds. Give them to be receptive of your word. Hide me behind you, Lord, in this house. May to decrease as you increase in me. The people will see you and not me. Touch my body. Anoint me afresh. In the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, in me. Have no dominion. Jesus Christ is Lord. We know that your word will give life. Your word will deliver. Your word will set free today. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Now, Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. Do whatever it is you desire to do in this place tonight. We pray these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God a great big hand for you. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the We're grateful tonight to be standing before you. We don't take it lightly. We honor each of you tonight. We give honor to God. And we honor all of the ministers and all of the missionaries on tonight. I want to say thank God for Bishop Arnold, come on, let's give him a hand. Thank you for When he comes, I tell people I don't have no trouble out of him as a member. <laughs> Bishop Arnold is here tonight. Thank you. We honor Bishop Rudolph, our adjutant general of the church every year. Come on, let's give him a hand. We honor Bishop Lindsay and Mother Lindsay in their absence. Can we give them a hand? Mother Watkins and um, Mother Anderson. Come on, let's give them a hand. Praise God for our leader, our leader here in the second jurisdiction of Arkansas. Such a kind man. We all need to be there. Come on, you can be there for that. He's our leader. He's our leader. He's our leader. God bless. And there is a, a portion of the worship center here tonight. I want you to stand. I thank you for coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I need your prayer. And uh, she's already been recognized, but it's my duty to recognize all. So she is uh, my high school sweetheart. <laughs> Known each other more than half our lives. I guess it must be 25 years now. And uh, we've been married 15. Yes. She didn't know anything about our church. Bishop Lindsay was such a great influence on both of us. And uh, 15 years ago, we came to Arkansas. We did not know we would be here today. She didn't marry a preacher. <laughs> I didn't know I would be a preacher. I was saved. That was enough. I was a worker in the church. And I'm trying to see if God called me or did Bishop Lindsay call me. <laughs> <laughs>
but I honor my wife, Dr. Carla Allen. Come on, let's go. And I honor my boys. Uh, we waited a little later than everybody else, but that's all right. Yes. Brother Caleb and Brother Caden. Come on, let's go. God bless, God bless each of you, and, and he has been recognized. This is my friend and my brother, and we're excited about his new assignment. That's uh, Pastor Aaron Willis. Come on, let's get it. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, the word of the Lord, Romans 10, 1 through 10. Romans 10, 1 through 10. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I on the way? Am I on the way? Thou art a part. I am. their own 
righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, which we preach. Yes. That if thou shalt confess yes, sir. Yes, sir. with thy mouth yes. the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that yes. God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, I we'll take just a few moments of your time tonight and speak from the subject righteousness. righteousness. No, rules. no rules. No religion. No religion. You may be seen. Righteousness. No rules. No religion. Righteousness is a virtuous and noble attribute that is synonymous with holiness. And its characteristics are so sacred and divine that it expresses the reality of the true and living God. Isaiah 5 and 16 says, But the Lord of hosts, shall be exalted in judgment. And God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. I'm going somewhere if you like, come on with me now, we can get together, all right? The Old Testament scriptures depicts accurately and often the righteousness of God and marches us into the new covenant where we are offered God righteousness through his son, Jesus, Amen. the Christ. For a moment, let's focus on the latter of our subject, rules and religion. You just kind of got to go here with me, all right? Rules are defined as regulations. The usual way of doing things. Authoritative control. We live in a day where rules are set up and put in place mostly to confine or regulate the individual. Can't do this. Can't do that. This is not the way we are used to doing. I'm going somewhere, you just come on. You can't break the rule. Somebody said rules were made to be broken. And if you learn the rules like a pro, you can break them like an artist. <laughs> this concept of rules has some kind of a way crept into the kingdom. Right, right, right. We as leaders seek to regulate and obtain control right. over God. <laughs> it's heavy, I know it is. And we are definitely caught up in the trap of doing things yes, the usual way. Yes, but how so when we serve a very unusual yeah. God. Think about it, think about it. God does not make you do anything. With all of his power, with his supreme reign, he does not overthrow your decision because he is righteous in his doings. Job says it like this, 
The Almighty is beyond our reach and exalted in power. In his justice and great righteousness, he does not oppress. He does not dominate. He does not tyrannize. He does not violate. I'm talking about God. And even after Job was afflicted, he still had a choice whether or not he wanted to trust God. And I'm glad he did. I'm glad he did because his circumstance became an example of God's righteousness. God is peculiar. He's peculiar. He's mysterious. He is unpredictable. He is the exception rather than the rule. We have bottled ourselves in our church culture so much into rules that there is no room for the folk that don't look like us. There is no room for the folk that don't act like us. that decide not to wear a suit. There's no room for the sister that doesn't even own a dress or a skirt. I'm preaching whether you like it or not. There's no room for the teenage or the young adult that all, all they listen to is gospel rap, but it, it gets them to Jesus. Makes room for everybody. And no million have come. There's still room. There's still room. There's still. Somebody shout righteousness. No rules. No religion. I'm just about finished. Religion is a personal set of institutionalized systems of beliefs, attitudes, and practices. Today there are hundreds or thousands even of different religions based on someone's personal belief and personal interpretation. And ironically, more than 70% of these consider themselves Christian. Religion is when people take the word of God to bind the spirit of God. But where the spirit of the Lord Now for your information, now let me help you. The law is not bondage. The law gives boundaries. But grace is not an open border to sin. Religion is akin to tradition. They first could. First could. doesn't make it true. And religion doesn't make it righteous. God is not interested in your religion. He is wanting relationship. Righteousness reflects relationship with God. Religion locks people out and divide while a relationship opens its arm and says, whosoever we let them come, let them come, whoever don't even matter. I'm just wondering if there's anybody in here that came to Jesus as they were.
set. Yeah, please, please be seated. I, I got it. God sent his son Jesus that we may become his righteousness. Listen to Romans 3, 21 through 23. It says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. And the Bible says there is no difference. For all, somebody shot all. all. I know these preachers know this Bible. Right. Yeah. For all, shot all. all. For all have sinned yeah. and come short of the glory of God. You must believe that he who was sinless became sin for righteousness. Now, now, Jesus himself was not accepted by religion. He did not follow the rule. Jesus did not follow the rule. He did the will of the Father. In so many instances, religion and its rules tried to regulate Jesus. He was not supposed to touch the man with leprosy. That was against the law. But Jesus touched that. And the man was clean. Thank you. Jesus was not supposed to let that prostitute wash and kiss his feet. Pharisee didn't like it. He wanted to judge. But he didn't show Jesus no love. So Jesus forgave the woman. And because she believed, she was saved. Thank you. Jesus was not supposed to heal the man with the withered hand. On the Sabbath day, in the church conference room. But he did. The church got upset. Then went out to plot against Jesus with their enemy. Herod's people tried to destroy him. But just as evil unites his doers, I need some righteous folk to get together and unite so we can win the world for Jesus. Somebody shot no rules? No religion. I'm coming to my club. In our text, in our text, Paul is nearing his missionary journeys in. And he writes to the church in Rome in an effort to make clear the righteousness of God in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in chapter 10, he is addressing Israel. He is addressing the chosen. He is addressing God's people, the ones who he picked out. He is addressing the original church because the church needed to be saved. I don't think y'all heard it. I, I said the church need to be saved. And the church needed to be saved because they were churching and not changing.
They were loyal and religious, but lacked spiritual knowledge. Israel was not conscious of the fact that God's righteousness can only come through faith in Jesus Christ and nothing else. Jesus the Christ is the end of the law because he came to complete and fulfill it. And he did that by putting an end to the system of earned righteousness. He laid the foundation. For every believer to not earn but achieve righteousness through him. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is not a license to neglect God's standards and commandments. I'm not giving you a license. Because God's standard, he is holy. And because God is holy, he is righteous. Titus 2, 11, 12 say, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all men, teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lovers, we should live soberly, righteously, godly, in this present world. You better get me out of here. God is holy. And the focus should not be to try and dress holy. Let me help you tonight. The focus should not be to try and act holy. But the focus is to be holy. Because if you be holy, you are dress holy. If you be holy, you are act holy. Somebody shout holy! Hurry up, I got to get out of here. Sin precludes living righteousness. Because the Bible says that all unrighteousness, it is sin. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Now, now is not the time to doubt about the way. The time now is to be a disciple of the way. Keep walking in the light. Because holiness, somebody shout holiness. Holiness is right. And it's right if nobody lives it. Holiness is right. Now confession confirms belief. But what's in the heart seals the deal. Because what's in your heart? It's where your treasure going like That if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. There yeah, you shall be saved. But it don't stop there. For with the heart Say it! Yeah, yeah. Now we have made being saved difficult, arduous, hard, and we've done it with our rules and our religion. Yes, the way is narrow, but it is not as complicated as we have. All in an effort to satisfy self righteousness. Y'all not listen to me here. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor.
to the blessing and abundance of our God. The time is near, but you cannot get ready. You have to be ready. You cannot get righteous. You have to be righteous. Don't fret. Don't doubt. Don't worry. Live righteous. Live holy. And the angel said in Revelation 22 and 11, he that is unjust, let him be unjust. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. But he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Yeah! 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 I told you, I told you. I'm at the end. But I got a few questions for you. Will you do away with your religion? Will you suspend your rules? Will you table your tradition and stand for holiness? Stand for righteousness and be counted among them that shall reign with him. Say yeah. Will you stand? Stand with friends of gold. because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.